This is Twit. This piece was stiff competition for this week's main story, but... As I said, it lost out to an explanation of what was discovered about the operation of DuckDuckGo's privacy browser. So I decided to lead with this one as the runner-up because, wow, it's just perfect for this podcast. A penetration testing and secure app development group known as DVOLN, D-V-U-L-N, recently took a close look at the eh, somewhat new, it was it was released in 2019, so three years ago, New South Wales government's digital driver's license, DDL. And, and putting it mildly, they found its security to be wanting. They documented the system's various troubles in a blog posting, which was titled, it's a uh, service NSW that ser service NSW is, is, you know, NSW is new South Wales. They said service NSW's digital driver's license security <laughs> appears to be super bad. So, okay. To set the stage, they explain in their posting in November, 2019, the new South Wales government service NSW introduced the digital driver's license or DDL for short as a means to make it easy for people to access a digital version of their driver's license. Upon the launch of service NSW's digital driver's license, there were multiple security researchers who publicly reported a number of security issues, including but not limited to the ability to manipulate digital license data and create fraudulent digital identities. What? <laughs> they, they said, as far as we can see, there, appears, there appears to be no formal public response from service NSW regarding the acknowledgement or remediation of these issues. As of February, 2022, According to the Minister for Customer Service, there have been 3.9 million people who have opted in for the digital driver's license. To put this into perspective, we can assume around 70% of people in New South Wales use and trust the digital driver's license as a means of identification and verification in their day-to-day -day lives meaning that 70% is of, you know, 3.9 million people is 70% of the population of New South Wales covered by this DDL. They said during Dev, I'm sorry, during D. Voln's analysis of the service NSW mobile application, it's for iOS, we discovered that due to the existence of several security design flaws, it is still possible, meaning today, for malicious users to generate fraudulent digital driver's licenses with minimal effort on both jailbroken and non-jailbroken devices without the need to modify or repackage the mobile application itself. So, of course, that would be one thing, right, to, to create a fake digital driver's license app which would could show anything you want it to show. But no, don't have to do that. Use the real app and just change the data. And it doesn't care. Okay, so, so back in 2019, not long after this DDL, the digital driver's license, first appeared during a security conference, a security researcher, as part of his conference presentation on uh, sort of on a larger topic of digital identity security, he demonstrated to the audience in public his ability to modify this New South Wales digital driver's license details locally on his mobile device, causing it to display false information. And displaying accurate information is the whole point because, you know, you, you'd like, you know, show your phone to somebody and they go, OK, yeah, that's you. And oh, look, you're 21 years old. Go, go, go ahead, you know, buy alcohol, go into the club, whatever. 
And although during his talk he mentioned that he had reported these troubles to service NSW, you know, the New South Wales government, there were no apparent public updates on the matter since then. So it's unclear whether these bugs were considered an accepted risk, which, okay, this is 2022, everybody. That's insane if that's the case. Or if any sort of remediation was ever attempted by the presiding government. So now we jump forward three years to 2022, where there are rumors circulating regarding underage people using false digital licenses. <gasps> no, the, you know, underage kids could, could be spoofing their digital identities? No. The Devon posting contained an authentic appearing Twitter posting made on November 25th, 2021, where the poster is annoyed that a bouncer at a club denied access to one 18-year-old when others using fake digital licenses are apparently regularly admitted. I have the tweet in the show notes for anyone who's interested. This was posted by Sydney2100 is the Twitter name. And, and this was sent to the, the at uh, Steny Hotel. And the Twitter reads, 18-year-old went there last night with three forms of ID and you wouldn't let him in because you don't count a physical at New South Wales driver license as valid ID. Really? He says, I know 10 kids that you let in regularly with fake digital licenses because they are easy to make. No idea. Meaning, you know, you have no idea what you're doing. So apparently someone, this 18 year old had a phys had a physical real world, like old school, you know, plastic new South Wales driver's license. And the guy said, uh, no. Uh, and actually Leo we're completely off topic. I may have mentioned this before. It seems familiar that, uh, uh, Lori and I were renting a car, uh, I don't know, a couple months ago, uh, to, to move some stuff out of her parents' condo in LA. So we got the biggest, it was a Yukon or something, you know, thing we, that we could rent. And, uh, it turns out in order to do that, I had to have a banking application on my phone, uh. which showed my name. And, and, and I, I mean, I had like, I had driver's license. I think I may have even had my passport with me, but you know, I mean, I had, I had a wallet full of credit cards. I had, you, you know, needed you know. this Hawaiian driver's license for McLovin. <laughs> if you'd had this, everything would have been simple. Unbelievable. I, I actually, you I, mean, and I said to this, bizarre. you know, this little young gal at the terminal, she said, oh, we have, we need one, like everything was fine. She said, we need one more thing. You, you need to show me a banking app, like, you know, Chase or whatever, Visa or something, for that, you know, your account with your name on it. They don't, they, don't, I, they didn't tell I you said, that ahead of time? That's bizarre. No, didn't tell me ahead of time. It was apparently new. And, you know, and as it happened, I, I think I had one or I have an account with Chase, but I didn't have their app. So I had to... Install it, it. Oh, log in. Then oh, I had to go to LastPass and and go get LastPass to log me in to chase. You know, in order. I was like, oh my. God. Anyway, point is, you know, apparently no. Now we're believing digital over That's real world, old school physical. You know. Anyway. Wow. Okay. That's so good to know. I'll make sure to keep my banking app on. On my yeah, phone. yeah, uh, and, and it's funny too because it. The, for, oh, and actually, she finally just said, "Okay, never mind." I was making such a valiant effort to do this, <laughs> and like kept getting stuck oh. by my, for my for reasons that my like my own security right. was getting in the way. She said, "Okay, oh, never for mind." Crying out loud. So, <laughs> so as we're walk as you we're you must be Steve car, Gibson. <laughs> <laughs> as we're walking to the car, she says, "You know," and I'm saying to her, "I said, well, you know, uh, I guess." I'm just old. 
and that's why I don't oh, have like I don't hysterical. do I don't do I don't do banking on my phone yeah. like ever. I'm not yeah. going to do banking on my phone. And she says, "Yeah, well, you are old because she said all the, everybody I know has like banking apps on their phones." Yeah. And I said, "Well, yeah. okay." Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, so uh not having seen the IDs themselves, uh, that, that that is this particular Twitter and and what the guys were referring to the the Devon guys wrote about this this Twitter posting. They said we cannot firm whether or not they were exploiting the poor security design or similarly using a static photoshopped image. Because again, if you're just showing like a screenshot. It could be faked, right? You like, you know, just Photoshop what what the this digital ID is showing, and that's what you present. So, there clearly there are problems with the whole concept of like so many ways you could do a digital ID incorrectly. So, uh, anyway, he says at the same time. Although due to ease of exploitation, it is entirely possible that these kids. We're using the same method detailed in this blog. Okay, so the Devon guys quoted one of the security claims made about the new digital driver's licenses. So they said, according to a press release from the New South Wales government, the digital driver's license implemented is, quote, hosted securely on the new service NSW app, locks with a pin, and can be accessed offline and will, quote, provide additional levels of security and protection against identity fraud compared to the plastic driver's license. <laughs> and the Devon guys explain that, in fact, real world physical driver's license counterfeiting is actually far more difficult than spoofing the content of a physical that of, of spoofing the content of a physical driver's license, they wrote, given the digital driver license's current state of security, and by which they mean, as we'll see in a minute, shocking lack of security, they said, we believe it would be far more difficult for an average fraudster to obtain the equipment necessary to produce high-quality plastic New South Wales driver's licenses. A fraudster would need to source and obtain hardware such as but not limited to a card printer, New South Wales holographic security foil, and other security features developed uniquely for the New South Wales identification cards, such as the middle green layer, none of which are commercially or legally available outside of the printing hardware. So, yeah, like, you know, if you've looked at your driver's license, you know, it's got all kinds of wacky stuff going on now. You, can, you know, you have weird reflective angles and things embedded in different layers and stuff that's shiny. And it's, it's like, okay, you can imagine duplicating that physically is not going to be easy compared to what taking a screenshot of the secure ID on the phone. Okay. So what are the specific problems with new South Wales digital driver's license? Okay. First off, the DDL stored license data is encrypted, but not very well. On iOS, the digital driver's license data is stored in a JSON formatted file, which is encrypted using AES-256 CBC. So 256-bit AES cipher, that's state-of-the-art. Cipher block chaining mode, CBC, that's fine. And then that's combined with base 64 encoding. Nothing wrong with any of that. Uh, the encryption will turn anything, even if it was ASCII textual content to begin with, into binary data. So the base 64 encoding converts that back into ASCII text so that it can be stored in a JSON text format file if, if desired. But here's the problem. The encryption key 
is the four-digit pin that's initially set during onboarding when the user first installs and sets up the app. That's it. A four-digit pin. Believe it or not, that's the password. A four-digit pin. Since a four-digit numeric pin can be anything from 0000 to 9999, there's, gee, let's see, <laughs> 10,000 possible pin combinations. One of those will correctly decrypt the JSON file. And the use of the correct decryption will be readily apparent because what's not decrypted correctly with the wrong, that is with the wrong pin guess will be gibberish. In other words, if an attacker is able to obtain the encrypted data, either through accessing an iPhone backup, direct access to the device, or a remote compromise, it will take only a few minutes to brute force the correct four-digit key to that encryption. There's not even any password-based key derivation function, you know, a, PD, a PBKDF, to slow down the guessing. Nope, just use that four, the four-digit pin, see if that decrypts the, the, the blob in, you know, back into something that looks correct, and if not, try the next one. During Devold's testing, their brute force process took only a few minutes to decrypt the digital license data, which could then be edited, re-encrypted, and used to change the digital driver's license details on the mobile device. In other words, no sign of any authentication, no digital signature, or anything else to protect against user tampering and manipulation of the stored and then displayed data. The only protection was this four-digit PIN, and when you use it, it decrypts the data, making it, uh, you know, bringing it back into plain text, which can be modified. Unbelievable. The, again, this is 2022. Next problem is a lack of any client-side validation. As they said, the digital driver's license data is never validated against the back-end authority which issued the license. So not only is there no local, like, authentication, it's not signed, nothing, but there's no, there's no ongoing periodic or ever verification with the original issuer. They wrote that this means that the application has no native method to validate the digital driver license data that exists on the phone and thus cannot perform further actions such as warn users or anyone relying on this data, anybody else, when this data has been modified. Since the digital driver's license data is stored on the client's device, validation should take place to ensure the local copy of the data matches the digital driver's license data that was originally downloaded from the service NSW API, or I would add, locally verify a signature. No such verification takes place. An attacker is able to display the edited data on the DDL app without any prevention. Okay, now... Presumably, wh whatever moron designed this system figured that since it was encrypted with military-grade 256-bit AES encryption and thus could never be modified, there would be no need to verify it. Uh, and, wh and one of the features they boasted was that it could run completely offline. Right. No verification needed. And speaking of verification, one of the key verification features of the digital license is its so-called pull-to-refresh functionality, which is used to ensure that anyone relying on it is viewing the most current license information. However, the DVOLN guys noticed that refreshing the application's driver license data only updates the QR code 
which is displayed on the license, and that the QR code only contains the license holder's name and whether they are under age of 18 or not. That's the only thing in the QR code. So if a fraudster had modified their license details and photo by decrypting it, modifying and then re-encrypting the data, this fraudulent data would remain visible on the screen even after the QR code date and time had been refreshed and updated. And not surprisingly, in still another example of incredible sloppiness, the license data is indeed exported in iPhone backups, making its modification outside of the phone trivial. As we know, when a secured mobile device is jailbroken, it's reasonable to assume that any security features an application may, you know, have could be bypassed because an attacker has obtained root level access to the device's storage and various services. But conversely, as long as a secured mobile device is not jailbroken, apps should be able to be reasonably secured that their, that their uh, users are protected against misuse uh, and various types of client-side vulnerabilities. However, in the case of Service NSW's application, the digital driver's license data is included in device backups which means that attackers or anyone wanting to commit fraud can obtain and modify their license details without ever needing to jailbreak the device. There is no way that this system was ever reviewed by any competent security expert. These days, we've got competent security experts coming out of our ears Anybody who had any training in digital application security would immediately see what an embarrassment this thing is. And the publicly known problems with it are now three years old with rumors that these digital driver's licenses are being readily spoofed. Of course they are. So we have to ask ourselves, how did this happen? Was it created by some government bureaucrat's unemployed nephew? And why doesn't anyone appear to care? It seems likely that someone will be caring very soon, thanks to the bright light that the Devold guys have finally aimed at this mess, because the tech press has picked this up and run with it. So this is going to be an embarrassment to New South Wales and, you know, whatever clown wrote this thing. Okay. So because this is the Security Now podcast, we can ask, so what's the answer? How do we solve this problem? Since I've been called a competent security expert, I'll take a stab at it. How about this? All that's needed is a certificate, a standard X.509 format certificate. This has all been worked out already. Certificate fields can contain binary data. They already do, like they have a public key in them. So the certificate owner's photo can easily be contained within the certificate, as can dates of starting and ending validity and anything else that might be needed, like a timestamp for when the certificate is signed, the owner's legal name, their physical address, their date of birth, and so on. What makes a certificate special is that its entire contents is signed by a recognized and trusted authority. As we know, the process of signing is that the certificate's contents are hashed to create a digest of that content. Then that hash is encrypted with the signer's private key. Anyone wishing to later verify the the, the the certificate's authenticity, meaning the contents of everything in the certificate, simply creates their own hash of the certificate's contents, then uses the signer's public key to decrypt 
the hash that came with the certificate. If the new hash and the decrypted hash match, then we know that not one single bit of the certificate's contents have been modified since it was signed. So, to build a simple and practical system, an existing trusted root authority, a certificate authority, you know, any existing certificate authority that's already trusted by the mobile iOS and Android platforms, you know, take my favorite one and chosen certificate authority, DigiCert, issues an intermediate certificate to the New South Wales administration, which is itself permitted to sign the special purpose and DDL, you know, the Digital Driver's License Certificates. Anytime someone out in the world, like a DDL license holder's DDL application, wishes to update and re-verify their license, that app sends a request to the government's server. The server pulls together all of the relevant data it has for the individual from its database, including their latest photo, their date of birth, the uh, driver's license uh, initial and expiration date, and builds a new certificate, which also contains a current timestamp. They use the private key that was obtained from DigiCert in this example to sign the resulting certificate. They then bundle that certificate with their intermediate certificate's public key and send the package back to the DDL application. Since the bundle contains a short certificate chain whose intermediate certificate is already trusted by the root certificate store in the mobile device, and since that intermediate certificate can verify the DDL end certificate, any iOS or Android device has everything it needs to verify the authenticity of the DDL end certificate. And there is no way for that DDL license certificate to be modified or tampered with in the field without breaking its signature. In this system, there's no need for a PIN to decrypt the certificate's data because there's no need for any certificate encryption in the first place at all. And as for that QR code that apparently only contains the user's name and age, that's also, frankly, ridiculous if its data can be spoofed. If you want to have some sort of verification reader that, that reads the QR code, then the QR code can simply contain the individual's driver's license number. And, and we know that, that's, that that cannot be spoofed. And if it were, it contains the driver's license number. So the reader obtained, the QR code reader obtains the license number that is being claimed on the, on the screen, makes a query to the government server to obtain their signed DDL certificate, and displays the user's name, age, photo, and everything else. So you can make queries on the fly. And if the QR code system needs to work offline, which was apparently a feature of the current system, then the QR code can simply contain a signed subset of the user's information, like only their name and date of birth, which is separately signed by the government's intermediate certificate. The QR code reader then scans the QR code, which is itself a tiny certificate. It, it, it uses the government's intermediate certificate to verify the QR code certificate and can then trust that the data contained in the QR code certificate subset has not been tampered with. Again, none of this is rocket science. As I said many times, we now have an incredible toolkit of technology components that can be applied individually and collectively to solve any of these sorts of problems. Nothing needs to be invented anymore. And the beauty of this system is that all of the well-tested and bulletproof crypto libraries already exist. In fact, the iOS and Android platforms already contain, down in their kernels, all of the required crypto machinery APIs. None of that needs to be created. So... 
hopefully when this ridiculous New South Wales digital driver's license disaster fiasco finally comes to light, the existing ridiculous system will not be salvaged. It is unsalvageable. It needs to be entirely scrapped and replaced with a simple bulletproof system, you know, like the one I just described. There's nothing to it. Seems simple. <sighs> yes, Leo. Unbelievable. That in, like, this was designed three years ago. This all existed three years ago. This is not new. This is just the obvious way to solve this problem. Did but, I did I hear you correctly that the data is unencrypted with a four digit pin? Yes. Like you enter your pin, and now I can modify my driver's license. Yes. Well, that's. I mean, anybody <laughs> looking at that would see I know. the problem. It, it's, it's insane. It, it it just assumes that. Well, why would anyone want to modify their driver's license? Yeah, I can't imagine why. Why an eighteen-year-old? Why would, would they would want to modify would spoof their... their age? Yeah, no one's ever no one's, no one's ever, ever done, done that. that before. No, that's that's just bizarre. <laughs> that's, oh well, 